Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. My mother was really into Elvis Presley. She'd make us a bag of popcorn. We'd go to the Y&W Drive-In Theater, and we'd sit there and watch the latest from Elvis Presley. The summer of 1954, my parents took my family to see The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And truthfully, I think I'm still traumatized by it. I always popped a big bag of popcorn <laughs> and uh, took some beverages there, but it was a nice, inexpensive way to have family fun. Few things have captured the spirit of post-war pop culture as well as the drive-in movie. For many in the region, the YNW Theater was the place for family fun, young love, and memories made in the glow of the silver screen. The screens on Broadway no longer stand, but the memory lives on in the hearts of those who experience the magic of the YNW Drive-In. After World War II, the United States experienced an era of growth and innovation. Two notable areas of growth were those of suburban towns and the use of the automobile. As a result, drive-in movies exploded in popularity. In 1953, the drive-in era came to Maryville as the Y&W Open Air Theater, built on farmland just off of Broadway. There's very few people know what the Y&W stood for. It was the two founders, Young and Wolf. Young and Wolf's successful endeavor quickly became the place to see the stars of the silver screen under the stars of the open air. Bring the family, bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see. For the youth of Merrillville, that was a gathering place. Everybody on the weekends went to the, went to the YNW theater. Friday night was the night you went to the YNW. Didn't matter the weather and cars were lined up both southbound and northbound on Broadway. It would get crowded too in there. I mean, the cars would be backed up and some of them had to wait on Broadway even to get them through and stuff. You'd pull up and they'd come to your window and say, how many? We used to go, if they had the car full, and we'd have two or three guys in the trunk. You know, they didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> One time they called us and they kicked us off. You can tell the high school kids who show people in the trunk and that they get there, pop the trunk, you see people getting out. You know, you're little and you're looking, what the heck can it? You didn't want to be off to one side too far because you just didn't see the picture as well. And if it was a moonlight, a moonlit night, uh, it would mess up the picture. It just didn't work well. So you try to get right in the middle and uh, if you're late, forget about it. You're going to be on the ends. You're going to be all the way in the back. And there's just rows of places to pull into park with your speaker that you roll your window down, get the speaker, you put the speaker in your car. You had the speaker back in the early day, and sometimes you got a crappy speaker, and it was all tinny, and it had been dropped a million times. Please replace the speaker on its rack when you're ready to leave. Failure to do so will damage both the speaker and your car. Roll down the window a little bit, bring it into the car, and, and give you just enough clearance for the bugs to get in. Once inside and set up, the drive-in offered an experience much different than indoor theaters. Patrons had the freedom to enjoy the movie in the privacy of their own car or with the company of fellow moviegoers. My brother and I sat in the back. Uh, I was behind my father. My brother was behind my mother. Did we get out once in a while? Yeah, there were people with blankets. There were people setting on hoods, or were people who backed into their space rather than, than pull straight in, and they'd open the trunk and set in the trunk and watch the movies. It was always pulling forward. But I do remember my dad having a station wagon my senior year, and that was easy to get kids in. You know, you, you could haul a lot of kids in there. <laughs> but as a, for dating, that was wonderful to go there for dates, you know. All the kids my age went there. We always liked to park in the same rows and what have you, so we all socialized a little bit. It was quite like Greece. It was the same thing as Greece. Sometimes you go there with your best girl and you pull up there and 
you know, pull up on a mound there because you, you know, that's how you can see the, the, the movie. And you'd, you'd watch at least a part of the movie. <laughs> it didn't matter if patrons wanted to mingle or to be left by themselves. They were still all part of the YNW community. Spotlights were very popular on the cars back in the 50s, so people would shine their spotlights on the screen, you know. They thought it was movie time and there was nothing there yet, they'd all start shining their spotlights. We used to take the spotlights and we'd chase each other on the screen with the spotlights, or they would, they would put a, a a Pac-Man or something up there, and then you'd try to chase them with your, with your, uh, your car uh, spotlight. It's intermission, rise and stretch time. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. They had a concession stand, which was nice, you know. Well, go to the concession stand and get, get your food and bring it back to the car, and you can sit there, have your popcorn and watch the movie and stuff. The hot dogs were terrible, and popcorn was stale, but it was still fun. <laughs> the popcorn was good. They had pizza. We used to call it cardboard pizza. You know, when you're out there and you're hungry, you, you got to make the best. I remember getting to go to the refreshment stand and buy a soda. Since they were always double features, you had to try to make that last for four hours. They barely lasted 10 minutes, but... Uh... <laughs> Adding to the appeal of the drive-in as an entertainment destination, the Y&W often hosted special events and provided quality fun for the kids as well. Fourth of July, they would have their fireworks display that we could just go out our front door and watch the fireworks. When you went there, they had a small zoo with a black bear in there. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. No, they had a black bear and then they had a little train thing where you'd sit on the train and you'd pedal with your arms to get it to go around the track. It was just so thrilling. They had teeter-totters, a grassy area where you can go have a little picnic. And they had a pretty, a pretty good sized little kitty land with swings. They used to have a carnival merry-go-round for the kids. They had a little play area and they had horses. They had horses where the kids could ride in circles and up and down paths and everything. It, it drew a lot of people in. And there wasn't a lot, a heck of a lot of entertainment going on back then, you know. We're delighted to have you with us, and we extend a cordial welcome to you. We've lined up the top stars from Hollywood and from all over the world to entertain you on our giant screen with the new colorful motion pictures you've been hearing about and reading about. The carnival atmosphere slowly went away as the area grew and as other entertainment options became available. But still, the YNW's viewing experience and options became better in the years to come. And then they went to the FM, you know, transmitter, and that was always better. You know, you have a premium sound system in your car. The picture might not be so good, but at least you can hear it. The implementation of FM radio helped do away with those clunky speaker boxes. And the YNW eventually hosted three screens of movie gems to play all through the night. It wasn't that uncommon for confusion and chaos to take place, though, as cars drove from one screen to the next in between showtimes. So everybody went through the same gate, and when you got to the turn, you had to make your decision where you were going. It didn't matter to them where you went. You already paid, everything is the same. So my dad went into the wrong screen. We're not supposed to be seeing this movie, and as we're watching, we're realizing that we're in the wrong place. Or look over there, there's the movie we're supposed to be watching. So that was a debacle. I remember that distinctly. I don't remember what movie. The YNW and its sister drive-ins all over the country still delighted moviegoers into the 1980s and 90s, but the era of the drive-in would come to a close. Competition from multiplex theaters, cable TV, VCRs, and other factors such as land value changes and rising energy costs made it difficult for most drive-ins to compete. This led to the demise of many in the early 90s, and the YNW held on until 1998. Today, mostly all that is left are some artifacts and memorabilia at the Maryville History Museum. But the story of the drive-in will live on in the memories of all who enjoyed a night under the stars 
at the YNW Open Air Theater.